Hey, Kat and Mimi here of Coach Kat and Dr. Mimi. And today we're going to share with you five steps to follow to crush your weight loss New Year's resolutions. How many times have you made New Year's resolutions and by February, you're already feeling defeated and ready to give up? It's so common. And as we were thinking about this video, we were looking at some stats. And in 2018, the top in a survey in 2018, the top three resolutions were to exercise more, to lose weight and to save money. And for weight loss, over 80% of those New Year's resolutions fail. Like this video today we're creating to help make sure that your resolution is not one of the ones that fail, right mom? Yeah, that you actually accomplish your New Year's resolutions. How awesome would that be? So let's, let's dive into the five steps to follow to crushing these New Year's resolutions. The first step is you have to have a plan. And Catherine, as a coach, why is that so important? What do people need to know about having a plan? Having a plan is your map. It's what you're going to follow so you know where to go to reach your goals. Now, a piece of having that plan is you need to be taking the right steps and the right actions. You can put a lot of your um, time, energy, effort, and money throwing it at something that isn't actually right for you. You're not taking the right steps. And the problem with that is you end up feeling like a failure, but you're not. The plan wasn't right for you. The steps you were taking weren't right for you. So a plan is critical and it's the like most, I would say the most important Important one of these steps so that you can actually take the right steps and the right actions. I agree. And I have that whole oatmeal experience, Catherine. Remember that? Yeah, the wrong actions, right? So yeah, I thought I was eating, I was eating healthy oatmeal, but too much. And I was adding too many goodies in it, nuts and cranberries and this and that. And I was probably taking in my whole day's worth of calories and carbohydrates. Yeah. So that's a great example of you had an idea of what you should be doing. Yeah. Decision in knowing how much of it to eat. Yes. You were taking, you were putting your energy and effort into an area that was actually backfiring on you. It was really frustrating. And this ties into our second step of having help and support to creating the right plan. So mom, why, why was having help and support from me, like why was that a turning point for you six years ago when we first started this journey? Well, really, honestly, it was because I thought I could go it alone, but I soon after working, starting to work with you, I realized I'd made a lifelong error that I really needed to work with someone and get help and support and be part of a network. And that's when things really started changing for me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And here's the, here's an important piece of this step two: get help and support. You're an expert in your field. You are amazing at what you do. I'm an expert in my field. I think I'm pretty great at what I do. Yeah, you are. You should focus on what you're great at and hire someone else for what they're great at to support you in achieving whatever that goal is. Yep. You focus on your expertise. Let me support you with mine. I like that win-win approach. Help and support. What's okay, number so three? Catherine, what? the, the next step really weaves into that concept, accountability, right? So in our intensive mentorship program, how do you help students to be accountable? I think the biggest first piece is having a weekly accountability. I think that's really powerful, knowing, all right, I'm going to be able to check in with my coach and see what worked, what didn't work, and where can I tweak my plan so that I am even more successful moving forward. So through weekly check-ins, weekly accountability, and adjusting the plan, working on not just the nutrition, not just the exercise, but also the mental and emotional component of this journey. Why haven't you been successful so far? And really taking your past experiences and shifting behaviors, shifting beliefs, 
and really starting to make progress and be successful moving forward. But it all starts with having that accountability and having someone, a coach, hold you to a higher standard so you can really move forward and achieve what you haven't achieved before. Absolutely. Seen it. Get help holding our, our, our feet to the fire, right? Totally. It, that accountability is, ties into step four. These all so tie into each other as you're- Totally. So that's step four, having skin in the game. Talk about that, Catherine. What do you mean by that? What do we mean by that? So step four, having skin in the game, means you need to be invested in yourself. Um, you can think of an investment in financial investment, um, a time investment, an energy or an emotional investment, but you must be invested. You must have skin in the game. Otherwise, it's going to be too easy to just come up with reasons why you won't take action. Um, totally. and, and often what is most powerful is having a financial investment because just like with health, with our wealth, we don't want to waste that hard-earned money. So when we make an investment in ourselves, we're more likely to show up and follow through because we want we want to um, put our money in a place that's paying off, and that will always pay off in your health. It's absolutely a true fact. And then once you really get into the habit of these lifestyle changes, that may be less important. Although we could debate that, right, Catherine? For sure. So. And here's a question I, I like to ask, and I know you like to ask this too, is saying to yourself on a scale of one to 10, how committed am I to reaching the results, to achieving those New Year's resolutions? And if you're not a 10 out of 10, you really need to step back and do some self-analysis. Do mm -hmm. I need to be more invested in financially to be a 10 out of 10? Do I need to understand why this is so important to me? to be a 10 out of 10. Like what's holding you back from being a 10 out of 10? Because if you're not a 10 out of a 10, those New Year's resolutions, even if you have the plan, even if you have support, even if you have accountability, you don't have skin in the game. You're not, in, you're not truly invested to getting the result. You're setting yourself up for potential failure. And you know, sometimes that's related to past failures. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we think is really important is to have success. And that beginning success can help you really strengthen that commitment to yourself. Right, Catherine? Absolutely. And, so, that, go ahead. and that relates to our last step, right? Step five is staying consistent. Now, have you made a weight loss or fitness exercise New Year's resolution before? If you have, yes. I would almost bet that at some point coming up to January 1st, Maybe you weren't doing that much at the gym. Maybe you were still, you know, coming off of eating lots of Christmas leftovers and saying, all right, January 1st, I'm going to not eat sugar. I'm going to cut the soda. I'm going to no bread, no carbs, protein and veggies only, seven days Woo! of activity. I am going to lose this 50 pounds for good. And one week goes by and you're feeling restricted and overwhelmed. Two weeks goes by and maybe you have some cookies because you, you deserve it. That's what you're telling yourself. Three weeks goes by and you miss a day at the gym and you feel like a failure. And by week four, by end of February, you, <laughs> felt, you now feel defeated. There's, you believe there's no way I can do this. And you give up on all of it, feeling like a failure. One month and you went from zero to 100 back to zero. That's not consistency, right? Consistency is, a, is doing, making healthy habit shifts and behavior shifts that you can sustain long-term. If you can go to the gym three days a week, long-term, that's consistency. If yep. you can focus on having protein with each meal and getting in a glass of water with each meal, that's consistency. Your New Year's resolutions, again, going back to step number one, you need to be taking the right steps and the right actions to be consistent. That's when you're going to see changes in your weight, changes in your inches, uh, a better relationship with your body, with yourself. But mm -hmm. you consistency is key. And I bet if you ask any of the ladies in our mentorship or who have been in our mentorship, ask them what's necessary for success, it's consistency. 
I'll vouch for that. Consistency is key. But all these steps are so important, right, Catherine? They really all need to be part of the plan in order for you to achieve those New Year's resolutions. Think of New Year's resolutions as a marathon instead of a sprint. Instead of all out, gung-ho, think of what shifts, even if they're small changes, what little changes can I make that I definitely can maintain long-term? Start there. Now, if you're not sure where to start, if you're not sure even how to tackle number one, like what is my plan? What should my right steps be? Look, that's where we come in. We aren't here to just help you lose 10 pounds the fastest way possible. Like we're here to really help you create a foundation of healthy habits and help you develop a sustainable plan that you can crush and maintain long-term. If, yeah, if you're curious how we can help support you in implementing your plan for crushing your New Year's resolutions, just reach out, send us a message. We are here to help. But with that being said, if these five steps were valuable to you, we want you to click the like button below. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Mom, are you ready to go crush your goals in 2020? I'm so ready to crush my goals. Are you? Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm ready to help everybody else crush their goals. Yes. And we hope you're ready to crush them too. So I know my mom and I, we have one of our goals in 2020 is to make the biggest impact possible and help more women be successful in achieving their goals and really feeling confident and proud and just happy in their bodies. That's one of our goals. What's yours? Let us know. Go crush those goals and we'll see you in 2020. Have a great day.